song. See, it says amazing grace. That what? Unlike you saints, it says that saves a wretch like me. So for the rest of y'all who are holy and sanctified and are ready for translation, congratulations. But I need amazing grace. You know, happy Sabbath. Let's just start with the public service announcements. Jesus saves. That was it. Now, happy Sabbath. Hey, guys, it's, it, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. The temperature is not crazy. The lights are on. The bills are paid. What more do you want? But to say thank you to our God. It, it's the day before my daughter's wedding. Elder Benedetti proudly reminded me that starting tomorrow, I have a new title. It's called Father-in-Law. I don't know what that entails, but I'm going to learn something about it. But God is good. Let's pray real quick. Father God, we know that we stand before the awesome king of the universe. We know that you are right and just. And you truly deserve our praise. But Father, as we bow our heads this morning, we ask that your spirit dwell with us, that you teach us and guide us so that we too can be grafted in by your amazing grace. In your son's name I pray, amen. As usual, Miss Betty, thank you. Somehow she can make reading scripture a spiritual experience, which is good, but my sermon is called For His Name's Sake. Psalms 23, David says, and there are some things about the psalm that you got to recognize. The Lord is my shepherd. If you just take that by itself, that says the word defender. The Lord is my shepherd, defender. I shall not want provider, right? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters, which means you are comforted. Comforted. So you've got a defender, you've got a provider, you've got a comforter. Now here comes <laughs> healer and guide. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness. Not for you. What does that next word say? A word say? For what? For what? For his name's sake. I should stop right there and say, quit your whining, quit your complaining, quit all that good stuff. Because he leads me in the, how many? Is it, does the word have an S at the end of it? So every time you get into trouble or you get off track, say thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And he's not doing it for you. It's for his name's sake. We always go, Lord, why does this happen to me? I would remind you to go back to Psalms 23, verse 3. For his name's sake. So that means he's a healer and a guide. But let's read on. And this is the part I really like. Al, head of security. Yea, no, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, I got a bodyguard in enemy territory. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. You see, I could be arrogant and says, you know what? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Translation, every time I do something dumb, God's there to correct me. And he's doing it for my own good. 
but for his name's sake. I bring all my problems that I encounter on me. He gets me out of it for his name's sake. Now here's a show of strength. See, I like breaking down this psalm. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In other words, if you want to use today, today's vernacular, thou prepare a table in the presence of my enemies, MC Hammer says, can't touch this. Can't touch this. Because God is in control. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup run it over. You not only bless me, but sometimes I have too much. See, and that's where that generosity thing comes in, Elder Joe, where the, the bills get paid, the light gets turned on, the air condition is nice and cool. In the wintertime, it's nice and warm. My cup run it over, so I give back. That's how merciful and gracious God is. But here's the best part of the whole deal. Surely, goodness and what? Mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you all to turn with me to Exodus 34, verses 5 through 7. I just want you all to read something, especially the part about goodness and mercy. And the, the name of the sermon is called what? For his name's sake. So what are we going to learn now? Or what, are we, what do you think we're going to try to do? Learn some things about God's name. See, Moses had asked the Lord, show me your glory, right? Exodus 34, 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Verse 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed. Here's what God said to Moses. The Lord. He could have stopped there. But then he said, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands and forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that by no means clearing the guilty. But when God said his name, he said what? The Lord, the Lord God. Merciful, surely goodness and what? So David is saying, he's saying, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me. In other words, down at the bottom, he's saying, verse 6, you can say he's still leading, leading me, but he's calling him by his name. Mercy. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Surely God is with me all the days of my life. You see, sometimes we read this psalm and we miss a lot of things. But when you stop and you break it down and you go look and you find out what God's name really is, how good God is, you realize that everything you do, every breath you take, every step you move to is because of God and because of his goodness. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell where? In the house of the Lord forever. So why do we worry? Why are we so fearful at times? Why do we reduce ourselves to name calling? You know me, I don't call names. <laughs> I do call initials. See, what is so special about a name anyway? And does some name carry more weight than others? We like to say that we are what? Christians. We even get more specific and say we are Seventh-day Adventist Christians. Right? Veronica Weiss says, when God gives you a name, it means that he has given you 
an identity. He has given you a purpose. When a man gives you a name, it could be a blessing or a curse. There are people out there that don't like their first names. They don't like their last names. They won't tell you their middle names because it might be something like Adolphus or something like that. So you won't get that. But if you are blessed enough or lucky enough to have the name that is associated with a certain William Alfred Bramble, then you've been, you've been blessed. After all, my name is Marlon Bramble. So having my father's name is, is something I'm proud of. You see, not everyone gets to live up to the family name. Not picking on you, Al. Not picking on you. <laughs> But not everyone gets to live up to the family name. Some people are not always proud of their family name. And that's true. But I am. Trust me, I am. Ralph Ellison said, It is through our names that we first place ourselves in the world. Our names being the gift of others. In other words, you didn't name yourself. Now remember, God said to a certain Jeremiah, before you were even born, guess what? I called you, which means he had a name for him. So your name is a gift from others, right? We must, but it must be made our own. You see, when I look back at my dad, my dad was the coolest guy I've ever met. I would like to say he's the coolest guy that ever met me, but he's the coolest guy I've ever met. The smartest guy I've ever met, the, 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 the most interesting, I mean, he was brilliant. Sorry, Justin, you're running an uncomfortably close second. But that, that's why sometimes I keep telling him, he, he looks at me crazy when I stare at him, and he can't figure out why. But every time I look at you, I see my father. I, I do. That's why I'm staring at him, and he's looking at me like, that man needs to be committed. But that's not the point. I'm looking at him because he reminds me of my dad. He's a spitting image of my dad. That's why I stare at you, so get over it from now on. <laughs> but you see, my father also was a man of God. And he taught us that above everything, you trust God. You place everything you have in God. You, you depend solely on God when you get up in the morning before you get out of bed. Silently say a prayer of thank you because I guarantee you there's nobody in this room brave enough, strong enough, powerful enough to wake yourself out of bed. Our God is that amazing that he can do that for you. And my page, God is also going to put us first. Because I was told in this Bible that even before we became on the scene, there was a plan in place. You see, the devil was up there name calling. There's a little children's game that kids used to play that I absolutely love that game. For all those kids in, in here who ever get bullied, the next time somebody calls you a name, I want you to respond, I know you are, but what am I? So if they call you a name, just say, I know you are, but what am I? It usually confuses them. That means whatever they say, you just say, I know you are, but what am I? But God is so good that when he calls our names, he knew who we are and he knows who he is. But getting a, a name doesn't mean that you get to follow in that footsteps, you see? There are people out there that they have like the senior, junior, the fifth, the 23rd, you know. And I don't get that. Too many children try to live up to their father's uh, name and character, but it, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you can't. There's a certain uh, Mikey Alston. He did a documentary film about what he uncovered about his family name. You see, he found out that with his family name, there are three families that are connected. Now, two black families and one white. And it blew his mind, but he's, this is what I like about what he said. He introduced himself this way. My grandfather's name was 
Wallace McPherson Alston, and he was a preacher. My father's name is Wallace McPherson Alston Jr., and he's also a preacher. My name is Wallace McPherson III, and I dropped out of seminary school. So you don't always get to follow in your father's footsteps, but you got to make a name for yourself. Our names or family names cannot save us. But Revelation says, Revelations 2.17 says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. To him that overcome, I will give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new written name, which no man knoweth, save it he that receive it. So here the best part. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And as long as I stay on those paths that he set up, he's going to give me a new name. So, Mr. Fred, you might end up being Alfonso or something. But we don't know it yet. We're looking forward to that. But the thing about it is, to get that name, Mark 13, 13 says, and he shall be, and ye shall be hated of all men for what? My name's sake. Now, folks, we're, we're Christians, right? We're Christ-like. There are people out there that don't like that that don't like you, that don't like what you stand for, that don't like what you believe, that don't like the life you live, that don't like the way you drive, the way you talk. But as long as you are a child of God, you are covered by his name because you're covered by his son's blood. So when I go down the street and I'm singing at the top of my lungs and people are looking at me crazy, it's not because I'm crazy. It's because I have some praise and thank you to give. So do it. It's okay. They'll, they'll look at you strange anyway. But the thing about it is, Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby what? We must be saved. So salvation is for his name's sake, by his name's sake. Whether you like it or not, whether you're famous or not, whether your name is on the side of a tall building or scratched on a park bench somewhere, your name's not good enough. Solomon says, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Proverbs 22.1. God's name, you know what, is linked to his glory as we read in Exodus 34. If God's name is linked to his glory and we are being led through this world for his name's sake, what are we supposed to do? It is not a trick question. Give God some what? Glory. The word... The word glory means distinguished, honor, praise, exalted, an exalted reputation, something bringing praise, worshipful, worshipful adoration, magnificent splendor. The Apostle Paul instructs believers in current this way, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the what? Glory of God. Now, eating is not necessarily a, a spiritual exercise, says Tom Sim, Simcox, right? But even the mundane task of doing just that, glorify God, nothing should ever be done to disgrace or discredit God. I repeat, nothing that we Christians do should ever be done to disgrace or discredit God. Because you see, God says, when Solomon says, Solomon did this amazing prayer, you know, they, they had the, the greatest party in the world that ever happened. There's going to be another one that's even better. 
at the dedication of the temple, Solomon had a banquet that was unequal. Biggest barbecue you'll ever see. Everybody was invited. But you know what God says? If my people, and what was the next words? Huh? Which are what? Now, why would God need to remind us that we're called by what? By his name. There's a theme here, for his name's sake. Which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their lands. Basically, God is saying, get your act together. If you say that you're a Christian, start acting like one. If you're going to tell people that you belong to me or you represent me, it's my name you're putting out there. I'm the one that they're judging. Because if you read the lesson, we're a mess. <laughs> we are definitely a mess. Your character must be Christ-like to be called a Christian. Otherwise, you're doing something amazing. You're impersonating God. And that's not good. You see, there's a story about a, a guy in New York where they, they were counterfeiting money, right? But they didn't quite get it right. See, they, were, they wanted to counterfeit as best as they can, but the machine made them a lot of $18 bills. Now, there's no, <laughs> hey, there's no such thing as an $18 bill. But they knew they couldn't pass this stuff off up in New York. So they said to themselves, Al, we're going to go down south. Those folks don't know any better. This is way back when. So they walked into an old country store. There's a guy behind the counter, an old man. And they said, can you uh, give us change for this? And he said, sure thing. How would you like that? Two nines or three sixes? <laughs> so when they think that they're getting over on somebody, you know, there is always a way. But sometimes you're going down the road and you may come up to a light, Miss Betty, and you're sitting there dreaming of heaven. You know, you're daydreaming at the traffic light. And the guy behind you is letting you know that he don't appreciate that. And then he drives around you and cuts you off and his bumper sticker says, Hunk, if you love Jesus. <laughs> and he also salutes you by handing, a, by, by, by giving you a, a finger out the window. I, I'm, I'm thinking he's pointing you in the right direction. But I would like to think that that gentleman or that lady bought the car from a Christian. Because some people still wear that, what would Jesus do? Have you, you've seen those, right? That what would Jesus do? And they drive down the road and do everything unlike Jesus. That's why we got to be careful about the name that we take. The Bible says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be in the midst of them. Matthew 18, 20. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in ourselves that we forget that the living God has adopted us and grafted us in. That you're no longer carrying your last name, you're carrying his everlasting name. You see, it's not just knowing the name, but it's, it, it, it's walking in the path. You see, there are times that as, as, as Christians, as Seventh-day Adventists, we, we equivocate back and forth about the 20, 28 fundamental opinions. Is that what they call? 28 fundamental belief, but you can hardly get it nailed down, but God has just one fact. I am the Lord, I change not. And I like that. Isaiah 42, eight says, I am the Lord, that is my name. See, some people don't think that God talks about himself. He's very proud of you. And he wants you to have his name. But he says, I am the Lord. That is my name. Don't abuse it. If you're going to represent me, don't abuse my name. Be careful what you say to other people. Be careful how you act. Because he said, and my glory I will not give to another, neither my praise to a graven image. Now, if we say we are God-like, we're Christ-like, and we don't act like it, we have counterfeited his name and made a graven image out of it. For his name's sake. 
But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up like calves in a stall. You get to be inside the house and not out in the pasture. You see, the time is coming when you're going to be invited somewhere. Two choices, banquet or barbecue. The banquet is inside. The barbecue is for those who didn't make it inside. I want to be in the banquet because there's a lake of fire. And when you put meat on fire, it's a barbecue. It's not a good one. But our God is good. It says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Psalms 20, verse 7. David was a hard-headed individual. David was just like you guys and me. So I don't want you to think I'm just picking on yours. Mr. Fred's getting ready to walk out. Just kidding. No. But David learned something. As long as I put my trust totally in God, I'm fine. As long as I remember who I'm representing, I'm fine. As long as I don't mess it up too badly, but if I do, I know I can turn and say, Lord, forgive me. Someone wrote, names not only represent our identities, but also reflect our relationship to society. Throughout history, names have represented in a variety of ways one's degree of power and freedom. In the book, Parting the Waters, historian Taylor Branch writes, among the most joyous feelings most frequently mentioned by freed or escaped slaves was the freedom to choose a name. It may seem like a simple trifling thing, but to choose your own name, that's what they wanted. Now, God is going to give us a name that nobody knows. He's going to give you a name that you've always wanted. And he's going to write it on a stone, a white stone that nobody's going to know except you who receive it. That's an awesome thing. Are we not freed from sin? Are we not escaped from bondage? We have a name that we call on, Jesus Christ. You see, folks, when you're going through the fire, you can call on God's name. When you're getting washed away by flood, call on God's name. When grief is threatening you on every side, when everything is going wrong, call on God's name. See, there's a, there's a, I think there's a poem that goes, when things go wrong like they sometimes do. That's how it begins. Call on God's name. When you're walking through your valley and your shadow of death, don't fear anything evil. For your God is with you. And my God's with me. And even if he has to use his rod and his staff and beat us a couple times, we deserve it. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Isaiah said it this way, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Isaiah just summed up in that one verse what David took six verses to say. But they said the same thing. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Be careful whose name you use. Let's not counterfeit God's name. If we fear and we believe that God's name is such an awe-inspiring name and he's leading you. That's all we got to do. The faith we live by, page 
point six says, the rainbow about the throne is an assurance that God is true. We have sinned against him and are undeserving of his favor, yet he himself put into our lips the most wonderful plea. Do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not the covenant you've made with us. God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And he has never broken his word. He pledged himself to give heed to our cry when we come to him confessing our unworthiness and sin. The honor of his throne is staked for the fulfillment of his word to us. God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never let another take you. My glory will I not give to another. And he says, when his son comes back and get us, he's going to show us off to the rest of the universe. And he's going to give us grace for how long? Forever. You realize that you are, you are going to be, you're never going to be tired of being shown off. Because God God's, God's is so proud of you. I want you as Christians, as Seventh-day Adventists, or whatever Christians you are that claims the name of Christ, that are searching for that God of heaven to come into your life, to remember that as long as you call on his name and claim his name, they can't touch you. Happy Sabbath. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we serve the living God, that yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're forever with us. Father, sometimes we get off the path, but your rod and your staff, they bring us back on. I ask that the people that are sitting here today, Lord, that you remember us and bless us, that we have struggles, that we call on your name. Sometimes we can't get the words out. Sometimes we mumble. Sometimes, Lord, we just come before you and we cry. But we do that because we know our God is good, just, and faithful. So for all these things, I thank you and bless your name on behalf of the people here also. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen.